External ballistics is the science or study of everything that happens to our projectile when it leaves the muzzle of our rifle until it connects with the target. So a pretty important piece of what we're trying to do with long range shooting. One thing that we use to help us predict what's gonna to happen to our bullet is we use ballistic software. So I'm going to type in the variables and the characteristics of my rifle, my optic, and the ammunition that I'm shooting into the ballistic software. And that's gonna give me a prediction of the elevation I need to dial in order to hit at certain distances. So that's what we're about to do right now. I'm gonna use the Geo Ballistics application. That's a free ballistic software application. You can download it on your phone right now and you can go through this process with me exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and build this gun profile in Geo Ballistics here. So I have the app pulled up. I'll go ahead and back out and you'll see I have several gun profiles on here. That's just because I have the paid for version. If you downloaded this for free, you're gonna have the one free default profile. And you can see I have that selected here, checked next to default. There's three dots next to it on the right. I'll go ahead and click on those. It'll ask me if I want to edit it. I'll say yes. I'll click on edit. And then the first thing it asks for is the name of the gun. So when I name my guns, I like to correlate it with the ammunition that I shoot out of it. For example, this is my six millimeter Creedmoor. I shoot 108 grain ELDMs out of it. So when I name my gun profile, I'm gonna correlate the name with the ammunition I shoot out of it. That way, if I ever decide to shoot a different ammunition through it, I know that this gun profile isn't correct for it and I'll have to go through and either edit it or build a whole new gun profile for that specific ammunition. So I'll go ahead and name this. I'll put gap six millimeter Creedmoor and then 108 grain ELDM. And the next thing that it's gonna ask for is information about my ammunition, my bullet. And you can see to the right of it, I have a little looking glass icon. So if I go ahead and tap on that, I can put in my rifle, whatever I'm shooting, a 308 Winchester, six Creed, whatever it might be, select the manufacturer that I'm shooting, select the bullet weight that I'm shooting, and I can auto populate whatever bullet I'm shooting and all of that information will be put in there for me. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna go ahead and just manually put this information in. So the icon further to the right of it, next to where it says bullet, I'll go ahead and click on that. And the first thing it asks for is my caliber in inches. So I'm shooting the six millimeter Creedmoor. My caliber in inches is 0.243. And then it's asking for my bullet weight. So my bullet weight that I'm shooting is 108 grain ELDMs. It's 108. And this is information that you can find off your box of ammunition. The length of bullet, that might be a little bit trickier to find. The length of my bullet is 1.266. Uh, this might be something where you have to refer to the manufacturer's website to find the exact length of your bullet. You might have to do a simple internet search. Worst things come to worse, you can pull the bullet out of the cartridge itself and take some calipers and measure the actual, actual length of bullet in here to get closer to what it is. If you put zero in here, it would simply just turn off a secondary effect of long range shooting in the ballistic software. It's really not gonna be detrimental to the Closer in distances, say five or 600 yards or so. So my length of bullet, 1.266. The drag model, this is the computer asking me what my bullet looks like essentially. So with a G1 drag model, those are for the flat based bullets. So if you're shooting something like a Remington core lock, those are flat based bullets. Us as long range shooters, we tend to shoot boat tail bullets and those are better modeled by the G7 drag model. So we're gonna select that G7 drag model because those are typically what our bullets look like as long range shooters if we're shooting the correct ammunition. The next thing it's asking for is the Metro. So this is essentially how they measure the atmosphere. There is a army way to do it and then there is a international civil aviation organization way to do it. ICAO is the most popular. So if you don't know, it's gonna be the ICAO option. I know that ICAO is how Hornady measures their ballistic coefficient. And then below that, we have a space for me to actually type in my ballistic coefficient. So this is a number that measures the efficiency of my bullet. Again, I can refer to my box of ammunition. They typically are printed on the box of ammunition. I need to make sure that I'm selecting the G7 in my case and not the G1 because sometimes they will provide you with both of those numbers. So my G7 ballistic coefficient is point 268. 
and that will be the number that I'm going with. If it's not on your box of ammunition, you may have to refer to your manufacturer's website or again, have to do a simple internet search. Or at the end of the day, we can all, always auto-populate our bullet information from that home screen that we were just at. So I have that information in there. I'm gonna hit done, and that will make sure that that BC gets put in there. And when it says V-min and V-max, that's just essentially the bracket for my muzzle velocity. In this case, I'm gonna leave it between V-min zero and then V-max 5,000. I'll go ahead and back out, hit that upper left-hand arrow, and then I'll scroll down, and now it's asking for information about my rifle. So the first thing that it's asking is my sight height. So sight height is the distance from the center of my bore to the center of my optic. I'm gonna go ahead and take these calipers back here and I'll measure that distance. The way I like to do it is just take the bolt, the rear of the bolt back here. If I can find the center of the rear of the bolt and measure from that to the center of my optic, that's gonna give me a good idea of what my sight height actually is. So I'll go ahead and measure this. So it looks like I'm at about 1.8 here, 1.8 inches for my sight height. So I'll go ahead and put 1.8 into the ballistic software. And then it's asking for zero range. So typically as long range shooters, we zero our rifles at 100 yards. If for whatever reason you end up zeroing at 50 or 200, you would type that information into this section. I'm zeroed at 100, so I will leave it at 100 yards. Then it's asking for elevation and windage offset. What this is, is if I had an error with my zero and I couldn't fix it, I could indicate that to the ballistic software and it will compensate the information that it gives me based off of the error that I indicated. Then going down further, we have barrel twist. So I am shooting a six millimeter Creedmoor. Twist rate in my barrel is seven and a half. So one and seven and a half, I'll type in 7.5 here. And then it's asking for a key variable in ballistic software, which is our muzzle velocity. So if we could, we'd like to shoot over a chronograph, a certain am amount of rounds, and then get the average of those rounds. And then I would put that number into the ballistic software here. At the end of the day, if you have to take the muzzle velocity from the box of ammunition, that's fine. That will get you in the ballpark. But just understand this is a key variable. And if you can get closer to what is true, it's gonna give you better information. So muzzle velocity for me is 2,995 feet per second. So I have that typed in the ballistic software here. Then it's asking for muzzle velocity temp. We're just gonna leave that turned off for now. And then we're getting into the optic. So it's asking for my solution units. I have MRAD, MOA, or it can give me a solution in inches if I choose to. I'm shooting in mils, so I'm gonna leave MRAD selected. And then it says elevation and windage SSF. That's simply if I had a tracking error with my optic and I knew about it, I could indicate that to the ballistic software. What a tracking error is, is if I were to dial on 10 mils and it actually wasn't 10 mils, it was say 10.2 mils, that would be a tracking error. It's not tracking properly. So I could indicate that to the ballistic software here as well, and the solution will be compensated accordingly. So we have all the important information typed in for our gun profile. We'll go ahead and back out. I'll make sure that my gun profile is highlighted and I will back out again using the top left arrow. And then I'm gonna take this chart screen. I have the chart and then I have a heads up display further to the left. Then I have a map function and then I also have competition mode. So if I go back to chart, you can see angle to target is zero, direction to target is zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in 1,000 yards. And if I scroll down, you'll see that my gun profile name is right there, GAP 6 Creed 108 grain ELDM. And then it's giving me information on my range to target, elevation, windage, velocity, and energy. So this is good. This is giving me a good starting point, a good prediction on what my elevation needs to be. So you can see I'm zeroed at 100 yards. It has a little discrepancy, it says 0.1. So I'll go ahead and back out and take any wind speed off. So I'll just zero the wind speed out here. And then I'll go back to chart and you can see that the discrepancy is gone there. Now it's just at zero. That's a secondary effect. We can get an elevation discrepancy 
if we have a strong enough crosswind. Now you can see I'm zeroed at 100 elevation. If I go out to 200, it's asking me to dial up 0.4 mils. So I dial up 0.4 mils. So I dial up 0.4, I attempt to shoot that 200 yard target, and then I adjust accordingly if I need to until I hit center on that target. So this has given us elevation predictions out to distance. And usually if our information that we typed into the software program is correct, it's gonna be very accurate information, right? But it's only as good as the information that we actually fed into it. So we need to be willing to accept that maybe we typed in a variable wrong, or maybe we put a decimal place where there shouldn't be one. Uh, we always wanna go back and double check if things aren't adding up like we want them to. So I'll return my turret back to zero here. So we have elevation predictions all the way out to, in this case, a thousand yards. It's also given me wind estimations based off of the wind I have typed in here, and then the velocity of my bullet at these different distances, and the energy of my bullet at these different distances. More so for you hunters out there, if you wanna make an ethical decision based off of the velocity and energy you're pushing at these distances. So now that we have a gun profile built in ballistic software, we can take that information out to the range and start to engage targets out to distance, working on the fundamentals of marksmanship and progressing in the art of long range shooting.